Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 2. This episode we are going to cover importing into Unity, we're going to cover textures and we're going to cover materials. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to stay up to date with every episode of this series and anything else on the channel. And with that in mind, let's take a look. So. What we're going to do in this episode, I say, is importing. Now, importing is quite easy. It really is just a case of dragging and dropping. However, trying to keep things neat and tidy is important. It's vital because you'll need to find things that you've imported many, many months ago and maybe you can't find them. So keep things neat and tidy. So let's right click down here in the asset section. Let's click on create and let's click on folder. And we'll call this one simply textures. So a texture is something, i.e. an image, which can be applied to give any object within the game some recognition. So in this case, let's apply some asphalt or like a sidewalk kind of texture to some objects to give the idea or the impression of a road. So if we go into that textures folder that we've just created, and I'm going to drag and drop these two textures into Unity down here. And you can get these textures on the website. The link is in the description below. Head on over there, go to the Downloads and Assets section, and then you can click on the GTA series, Episode 2, and there are the textures. So as they stand, they're not doing much right there. They're just images down here. But it's worth noting that textures aren't actually applied to objects. Materials are applied to objects. A material is a way of manipulating a texture to give it a different effect depending on how we want it to look. And there are a couple of different ways that we can actually create a material. So if we click on Asphalt 001, we'll see a couple of things up here. We're not going to change too much up here, but one thing to note is the general texture type should be default. There are a couple of other different ones, one of which we will explore in this episode and a couple more we'll explore as we go further on. <clears throat> now, to create a material easily, all you would need to do is drag and drop this texture onto this object. So, drag and drop. And you'll see instantly that that object now becomes just like that texture. It looks a little big, but that's something we can deal with. You'll notice as well, a folder has been automatically created down here called materials. If we go into that folder, you'll see a little ball image. This is our material. If we click on it, you'll see over here in the inspector panel, we get loads of different options. If your options don't look the same as mine, make sure you're not in debug mode. If you go up here to the little menu next to the padlock, click it, make sure you are ticked as normal and not debug. We will be using debug for some things at some point in this series. However, for now, we need to remain in normal mode for the inspector panel. So essentially, you'll notice up here, first option, albedo. This has that little image that we've already dragged and dropped onto this object right there. And we can click this little icon here and select a different one. By default, Unity has a couple of different things in here but we don't need to worry about it for now because we've already dragged and dropped on here. Now you can change the metallic kind of feel and look of the object just by sliding it. And you'll notice whenever you do, it changes it real time in our scene, like so. Same applies for smoothness. And it depends how you want your object to look. And once again, if you make a mistake, hold control, press Z to undo, back to its original state. Here we have the source as metallic alpha. We can change it to albedo alpha. It's not going to make too much of a difference at this point because we're not going to delve quite into graphics at this early stage in development. But don't worry, we will take a look at making nice graphics within this series later on. So I'm going to keep it as metallic alpha just for now. Next down, we have something called normal map. Normal map is a way of making the image look bumped, i.e., it reflects light to a degree to give it a 3D impression. And a normal map isn't necessarily just a texture. So if we go back to our textures folder, and if we click on this actual image here, hold control and press D. It will then duplicate 
that image. And you can see it does carry on the naming convention. However, we don't want to carry on that naming convention. So if we press F2 to rename, we'll change it back to asphalt001 underscore N. Now that N stands for normal map. So we're going to change this texture type to a normal map. So over here in the inspector panel, top option, let's change that to normal map. You'll notice a few things change here. There is an option called create from grayscale. We're not going to use that just yet, but we will do in a couple of minutes to show you the difference of how a normal map can affect an object and its texture. So let's click apply for now. You'll notice the icon down here changes color. So let's go back to our materials, click on the material for asphalt. And here we need to drag and drop that normal map we've just created. So drag and drop and we should see an effect in the scene. There we go. You can see how much of an effect that is having. We can change how much of an effect by sliding this right here, the normal map. So I've hold down uh, the left mouse button and we can drag it either way and we can see what's happening. Having it set as zero implies no normal map will be displayed through it. Having it set as 0.1 means a slight normal map and then so on. This is where we can change the normal map to have a different effect. So if we change this back to one, <clears throat> click on the normal map, click on create from grayscale and click on apply, you'll see a different effect happens. This looks a little bit more realistic creating from grayscale. And once again, we can go back to the material, click on it, and we can change how much of an effect this has. Generally, you don't want your normal map to be too high. It can be a little bit distorted if it's too high. If we set it as one and zoom in, you can see how it looks there. So if we change it to 0 0.5, we can see it's not too bad now. So that's a reasonable, that's a reasonable looking texture. Next thing we're going to take a look at, we're not going to worry too much about height map occlusion or detail mask just yet. If we tick a mission, if we hover over it, it should give us a little bit of a, uh, it doesn't give us any insight, but if we tick it, we're not going to notice too much of a difference yet, but it will come in handy later on. So let's just make sure we do have a mission ticked just for now. Global illumination will change to real time. Again, it doesn't have an effect too much now, but it will do later on in development. Now tiling is a way of changing how often the texture repeats itself on this object. At the moment, it's one by one. So one whole image of that texture is embedded onto here. If we change it to two by two, you'll see that we have four textures over one section. So there's one here in this quarter, one here in this quarter, one here in the top quarter, and one here as well. Again, if we change it to four by four, you'll see it repeats so many times. So four by four, that means there is now 16 repeats of that one texture on this one object. Generally, a four by four tiling is pretty appropriate for the size of this object. We're, we're not going to worry too much about any of the other options just for now, but we're going to go back to this metallic and smoothness. Now we have the normal map attached, we can change this to give it a different effect. And you can see already that if we drag the metallic quite high, it gives us a really gritty, stylish looking asphalt that we can use, which looks quite nice. So I'm going to keep the metallic as 0.65, I think. And last thing we're going to take a look at here is the albedo color. We had the albedo image, but we can change the color. Having it as white means that's its default color. Changing it to something else gives it the hue or tint of whatever color you have. So now you have a reddish looking asphalt, which looks odd if I do say so myself. But this same effect can be applied with lighting, which I will quickly show you now. So if we set it back to white, head to our directional light, we can change the color here just by clicking on the bar and changing it to red there. And you can see the section where the light is is highlighted red. So lighting, as I said in last episode, is vital. So let's set it back to its original color. Now, I did say there's a couple of different ways you can create a material. And as I say, the easiest way to create that material is to just drag and drop it onto any object. So another way is to create the material manually. So in your materials folder, right click, create, 
and then down here you'll see material click it and then we can just simply call let's call this one uh side walk zero zero one hit enter and now you're presented with a completely empty default material it's almost in the same state that it was before we created this one here so the only difference is this one doesn't have the texture this one does so let's add that sidewalk texture drag and drop over here onto the albedo and let's create the normal map for that one as well so select hold control press d same again f2 to rename and let's change it back to sidewalk one underscore n and then let's go over here change to normal map and then click on create from grayscale and then click apply so now let's create a sidewalk for here so we can take this cube here if we want to hold control press d to duplicate and next thing before we move it anywhere we're going to explore something called snap settings if we go to edit and go to snap settings here what this defines is when we're holding control and moving on these arrows here that indicates how much it will move at the same time if we were to move an object without holding control we would just gently move it to a decimal number here so it could move up you know to 0 0.23891 however if we're holding control and move it up it will move to 0 0.5 because it's basing it on the snap settings here so I have mine set at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in the X, Y, and Z. So if you have yours set that too, when you hold control and move your object up, you'll notice it goes up in increments of 0 0.5. So I'm going to bring it back down. So we're at 0 0.5 here. I'll bring it across this way to about there. And now let's attach that material onto the sidewalk. So drag and drop the material onto there. And you'll notice the same effect would happen if we were to drag and drop the texture. So basically, it's probably easier to drag and drop the texture, but never be afraid to create that material from scratch. So next, what we'll do is let's apply that normal map onto there. Let's change the tiling to four by four and let's click emission. And I'm going to change the normal map to be same as before, 0 0.5. And next what I think I'll do is I'll try and match the asphalt as best I can. So we have 0 0.65 as the metallic, so let's change that to 0 0.65. 0 0.65. And yep, same again with the alpha, uh, sorry, the normal map I should say, uh, half, so 0 0.5. And let's change global illumination to real time. So there we are. We're adding textures to, materi uh, to materials, which then get added to objects. And remember, like I say, it's not the textures that go on the material. It is, sorry, the object. It is the material that goes onto the object. So what we'll do now is I'll bring, without snapping, this sidewalk down just a little bit to about there. And then finally, let's right click and let's rename this cube as Asphalt Section 001. And let's rename this one as Sidewalk Section 001. Last thing we're going to cover is saving our scene. By default, <clears throat> at least if you're in a relatively new version of Unity, that means after unity 5 you should be presented with sample scene as the default scene and you'll notice that up here so we could theoretically just go file and save scene however i don't want our scene to be sample scene i want it to be the world so i'm going to go file save scene as and i'm going to go into the scenes folder you'll notice that sample scene is already there and i'm simply going to call this open world and save and here in the scenes you'll see there we are that is the scene we are now working with and these are still classed as assets because they exist down here in a project window 
So, next episode, guys, what we're going to take a look at is bringing a character into this scene. So that's where we're going to take a quick look at the asset store because there's assets in there which I quite like and I think will work very nicely for this series because there is a lot of free stuff in there which will come in very, very handy. Uh, so we'll import those assets and we're also going to take another look at our camera and how we can use that camera to manipulate what we see. Soon after, we'll be delving into some C-sharp coding. So, guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.